Hi, I'm Mike Svob, and today I want to talk about whether you should use reference photos to paint from. There's several different ways to think about this, but I'm going to talk about using your own reference photos to paint from. So, the way I think about this and the way I've followed this in my career is I learned to paint on location from still lifes, from photographs, from sketches, from all kinds of different things. And in the end, when I hear the word reference, what I always tell people is the best reference you can get is the reference you want to use. So in reality, the best reference is always going to be being there in the light at the time that you want to paint the subject, whatever it is. So that's kind of the argument for plein air painting. If you want to paint plein air, you want to capture what it is, you want to be there at the time painting so you can capture it. Now, a lot of times it's raining, it's the bugs, it's the this, it's the that. The second best thing is taking a photo and working from it in the studio, okay? Now, the problem with that is that people will very often copy the photo, and this is a learning kind of thing again. People will take the photo and they'll think, well, I want it to look like the photo. Now, the photo was already a compromise because it's not exactly what it looked like, so you're compromising on the compromise. And if you follow it faithfully, you end up with something that looks like the photo, and the common thing you hear is that, why don't you just blow the photo up and frame that? You could do that too. And that's another argument, but for our purposes, you want the photo to give you reference so that you understand what it is you were inspired by when you were there. With me, most of what I use as photographic reference is about shapes. So I know what the shape of the boat is, the mountains, the trees, the whatever it is in relation to the other things there. And so that's the biggest thing I look for are shapes. I look for a pattern of light, light describes shapes, so it's partly light describes shapes, and then a little bit about edges, but photographs aren't the greatest for edges. And the worst thing about photos is color, so very rarely do I try to take photographs of color. I'm always trying to get more shape and value and pattern, and then the rest of it I do in the studio, or I make it up as I go along to make a better painting. So when you're out painting, if you're out on location painting, you want to paint as you go along. If you're out on location painting, take a photo, take it back to the studio, finish it in the studio, because the other problem when you're painting on location is the light in reality outside changes constantly and you really only have an hour, an hour and a half at the most where the lights change so much, you're looking at something completely different. Now you're outside, you're painting plein air, but you're not painting what you're looking at anymore, so you might as well be in the studio, all right? So what really twigged me onto this is for a long time I would, you know, I'd hang out with artists who said they were plein air painters and, you know, we'd go to Mexico or we'd go to Arizona and I'd be down in Mexico and they'd be painting you know, painting snow scenes of the Rocky Mountains and saying they were a plein air painting, right? Um, so that's kind of, you're painting outside, but you're not really painting what you're looking at. So the whole purpose of painting outside to me is painting what you're looking at, being inspired by what you're looking at and trying to capture that. So if you're not doing that, it's a lot more comfortable, a lot fewer bugs, not so hard to get there to paint in the studio, All right? There's a lot of other ways to do this. But if you keep in mind, get the best reference you can, whether it's on location, a photo, a sketch, whatever, that's the way to think of it. And then use your own photos because you'll become a better artist. You learn how to crop, you learn how to do this, you learn how to do that. You learn how to, fo how to use a photo as a tool in the painting process. And that's really where you want to be. It's a tool to doing a better painting and that's how you want to think of it. I hope you found this information useful. Now, I have a handout called How to Fix Your Painting, and you can get it by clicking on the link below. Thank you for watching.